thank you thank you dharmeshwari we'll get ahead with the start and uh, it's most interesting and uh, most of the cutting edge state of the art uh, advancements have definitely happened in this field only so we'll just go for a few introductions i'll just touch on the advances and milder types of cataracts evolution of cataract surgery from icc to femto advances in implants also from afagi glasses to multifocals end of thalmitis the dreaded complication for an ophthalmologist what is new in that and the systemic aspects related to cataract as well as for cataract surgery and what is after cataract and its treatment so as you see a normal clear lens looks like this in a slit lamp uh, view so as age increases and the cataract develops it becomes a bit hazy especially in the center we call it as nuclear sclerosis and it come become as bad as becoming brown so this is a very very advanced stage of a cataract and we have also these stages where you have a fully white lens which we call it as a mature cataract and if you leave it without operating it goes for a morgagnian stage where you see that the cortex has become very liquefied and the central nucleus has sunken down so and if you leave it also at this stage this cortical matter diffuses into the anterior chamber and we reach a phacolytic stage so we in spite of the uh, outreach and all the educational things that we propose still we have cases like this presenting almost 2 3 cases every week uh, and uh, it's not rare to see phacolytic cases and there are milder forms of cataract also which cause vision loss as you see uh, we have only a, a whitening of the posterior part of the lens which we call as posterior subcapsular cataract and uh, here it's a posterior polar cataract so the rest of the lens is clear just at the central posterior part of the lens you have a white uh, uh, ring like uh, opacity which obstructs the vision and this is a cortical cataract as you see the anterior cortical part since becomes uh, whitish and you have visual disturbance because of this but uh, we have some complicated cataracts also because of uveitis you will see that it, uh, uh, there is lot of posterior synecae you have hypopion also and you have a traumatic cataract which we commonly see because of trauma so whatever may be the thing the good news is we can always give good vision with the present technology and the resources so evolution of cataract surgery as we know started with ecc intracapsular extraction extracapsular extraction now phaco and then femto laser assisted cataract surgery so you go one by one so the main thing i would like want you to notice the length of the incision this is the initial uh, way we did cataract surgery intracapsular extraction using a cryo probe the mature cataract was pulled outside and you see the length of the incision it would be around like 14 to 15 mm and then we had the lens intraocular lens coming so this is a extra extra capsular cataract extraction where a similar large incision is made almost 13 to 14 mm in size and the cataract is extracted out and sutures are being placed you see we put almost like 5 to six sutures so it's a very big incision with lot of suturing so then there was a transition to sutureless cataract surgery so we had small incision cataract surgery where as you see a small uh, 6 to 7 mm incision was done and uh, a three planar incision was made and this is the capsule anterior capsule which is being removed from the front of the uh, lens so manually it is removed and the nucleus is extracted and there is no need for suturing so a uh, rigid intraocular lens is being placed so this is not a foldable lens is a pmma material and uh, with the hydration of the wound the uh, su uh, section closes by itself without any suturing and then the conjunctiva is retracted and it is closed so now uh, the 
main uh, incision which was 6 to 7 mm has now got reduced to 2.2 mm incision. So, this is the keratome which we use for entering the cornea. So, so it is entered. So, we now use the trepan blue to stain the capsule and then same thing we use the cystitome to make a round regular opening in the uh, anterior capsule. Uh, you should note that this opening is being done with manually and once it is complete the lens is removed with the use of a FACO probe. It is an ultrasound uh, guided machine. So, we use a second instrument here to divide the uh, cataract into small pieces inside the eye. So, you should remember that we are working in a 3 to 4 millimeter space between the cornea and the posterior capsule. So, we need to be very very accurate and uh, careful. So, the lens is emulsified using the uh, FACO probe. So, slowly the small bits which are being reduced are being taken out and then eaten by the FACO probe. So, th there is a need for the second instrument also to be introduced. Now, we are introducing a foldable intraocular lens through the 2.2 millimeter incision. It is a and it can be placed inside and as I said without sutures it can be uh, hydrated and the uh, surgery comes to an end. So, from a 15 millimeter incision with sutures we have now come down to 2.2 2 millimeter incision. So, now the next advancement has been in the femto assist laser assisted cataract surgery, FLAX we call it. So, we will show you the difference here. So, here this is the conventional method which I showed you using the keratome. We are entering with the blade to make the incision while in the femto second laser we are use the laser itself makes these openings. So, it is a bladeless surgery, we call it as bladeless surgery. So, you see that the opening which we make manually using uh, standard during the standard procedure is being accurately done by the laser machine itself. We can adjust it to few the exact millimeters we want it to happen and it is round and very regular and aids in the proper centration of the lens. So, all this accuracy will improve the quality of vision. So, and the pieces also we using the instrument to divide the pieces. So, here the already the femto has already divided the pieces and we have to just go in and just take off all the pieces without trying to do anything. So, this is the machine, flax machine which is there where the patient is made to lie down and the machine is docked over the eye and this is the real time how the FACO, once you on it, you will see that the first the capsular excess is being made, the opening in the anterior capsule is being made. You see as the laser starts working, you see the bubbles coming out. Then you see that the lens is being uh, divided. So, you will see a small cross in the center which is appearing because of the division of the uh, nucleus. So, you will see that the nucleus is now being divided. So, it is becoming more visible now. So, rather than using a second instrument to divide the laser actually, now you see that the incisions are being made. So, what we used to do with the blade is being done by the femtosecond laser. So, it all boils down to perfection, uh, 2 millimeters of uh, perfection so that you can have a very, very uh, good and safe wound. So, this is how our uh, initial cataract surgery was done uh, with the surgeon wearing a loop with somebody holding the torch and Performed. So, now we have 
reach the stage where we use technology, microscopes which give good magnification, good lighting, different uh, views and this FACO machines which help us to operate within a very very small millimeters of incisions, 2.2 millimeter incision and the perfection which we obtain using the flax and now the next future is to do surgery without looking through the microscope. So this is called as uh, the cutting edge technology where as I said before we are working on a very very 2 to 3 millimeter space. So this technology gives lot of depth perception and it is also very good in teaching uh, as I aid for the students also. So as far as the surgery is concerned we have seen whatever has advances have been done then we will go for the implants. So we after we remove the lens we put the implants. So initially we used to leave them aphakic and uh, we would have seen people wearing these thick aphakic glasses and with the introduction of intraocular lens the uh, outcomes have been far far better and uh, we have different types of lenses coming in. We have three piece these were rigid lenses uh, which we use for uh, sutureless cataract surgery which I showed a uh, three piece lens and a single piece lens and with the FACO emulsification we have these foldable lenses. This is a aspheric lens with a yellow tinge to prevent UV uh, light also. So then coming to more perfection we have uh, toric lenses also whereby these lenses have markings. So we mark the eye and then we place the lens inside so that these markings corresponding correspond to the markings outside. So what is the use of these lenses? They make the patient less dependent on glasses post cataract surgery. So if their cornea has lot of astigmatism this can also be corrected using the uh, intraocular lens. And the next advancement is the multifocal lenses which are the state of the art uh, lenses now which help the patient to see both distance and near vision with less dependence on glasses. So these as you see will have concentric circles in the center which helps the patient to see both for distance and near as the pupil constricts and relaxes. So this is as far as the lenses are concerned. So the whole thing is about giving perfect vision with as much less dependence on glasses. So the next, next important thing is endophthalmitis. As I told you it is the most dreaded complication and uh, we have come out with a uh, intracameral moxifloxacin and we have published in the American Academy of Ophthalmology where we have studied around like uh, 6 lakh uh, patients, 3 lakhs without and 3 lakhs with moxifloxacin and we have seen that there is a dramatic decrease in the incidence of endophthalmitis, almost a four-fold decrease in endophthalmitis which is also uh, good for the patients. So well, we had uh, uh, incidence of 0.5 percent and now it has started reducing and we have only 0.1 to 0.2 percent of endophthalmitis in whatever cases we do. So this is uh, the drug uh, intracameral moxifloxacin which we give it at the end of the procedure. So now coming to the risk factors for cataract as you know old age, exposure to sunlight, diabetes, use of steroids in different diseases like renal diseases or asthmatics, rheumatoid arthritis and now we commonly see young ladies who undergo IVF also presenting with uh, early cataracts and definitely trauma. So what are the things that we see when we under uh, make the patient subject for cataract surgery. So we make sure that the blood, fasting blood sugar is less than 130 milligram percentage and the postprandial blood sugar is less than 200 milligram percentage. Blood pressure it will be ideal to have it less than 160 to 90 and if the patient is cardiac, asthmatic of the age is more than 70 years we usually ask them to get physician fitness. So all this has been done to avoid complications both in the eye as well as for the patient's life because uncontrolled blood pressure, cardiac, asthmatics they have exacerbations when we subject them to cataract surgery and there is a medical emergency. So we have these criteria to make sure that everything is done very safely. So what is this posterior capsular opacification? Usually after cataract surgery patients will complain that there is sudden decrease in vision. 
So the most common reason being PCO. We call it as posterior capsular opacification. After the lens, you see that posterior capsule becomes white. And uh, this is a slit lamp image and this causes a decrease in vision. So we have a laser machine for it whereby we make a small opening in the center. So that uh, it's a OPD procedure. Hardly it takes a minute or two and we make an opening in the center and the patient gets back the, uh, regains the good vision post -op. Thank you.